Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Lee Dean. I work for Cornell University's Plantations Department, and today I'm going to show you briefly how to plant a tree. Um, for starters, some of the important things to know is that when to plant a tree. Fall planting and spring planting are usually your best times to do it. Um, and I want to start, too, before I get going, explaining to you that um, when you purchase a tree from a nursery or from landscape place or a box store or something, some of the misconceptions about it are that when you re receive the tree, the container that it's in is actually the depth that you're going to plant your tree at. That's not necessarily the case. I'll get to more of that briefly here when I get putting it into the ground. Before you plant a tree, when you purchase it, I recommend that you look into the mature size of the tree that you're putting in. So you don't run into problems like is it hitting power lines, is it into a building, is it over your driveway, your swimming pool. Uh, problems that could um, be in the future that you didn't see just by looking into the tree. Another thing that you can do sometimes is a soil test. Relatively cheap, your local cooperative extension here at Cornell, um, there's testing facilities that can tell you organic matter, pH requirements for the tree you're picking. Um, that will help guarantee that your tree will live a long, healthy life where you're going to plant it at. So um, those are some of the things you can do before you even uh, think about putting the tree in the ground. So I want to go over quickly um, planting width. A good rule of thumb for planting a tree is to have the hole one and a half times as wide as the container or the root ball that you bought. Um, and you can see here that you know we have a 10 inch diameter pot that the tree came in and well over 20, 24 inch diameter hole I've dug. Um, so that's where you first start. I tend to pull the sod out of the way, scrape it off lightly and then dig my hole. Um, and I just set it to the side. I can clean it up later. It's really easy to do. Um, and now the more important part really is opposed to the width of the hole is the depth. And again, as I stated before, lots of people assume that when you purchase a plant, how you get it in, in the container is the depth that you want to put it at. Well, depth is actually based on the tree's flare, which is where the trunk and the roots meet and the tree swells down and flows out into the earth. That determines your height. So I'm going to pull this tree out and I just tap it when it's in a container to loosen up the soil around it. And then we'll slide the ball out if we can. As you see, this tree did not come out all that well. However, we're still okay. Now, as I stated before, here's the soil line that it came to. What I'm looking for when I put it in the ground to tell me the depth is what's known as the flare. And you can see here, I believe, this is the trunk. Here's the root system. You can see how it begins to swell out. That is going to determine the depth of the planting. This you want at grade level, at the top of the ground. So when I place my tree in the hole and position it accordingly, however you see fit to do that, um, what I do is I generally eye it and see if my flare is at ground level. And you can tell by this tree here that we're way low. And this is a shallow hole. So I'm going to gently lay the tree down and I'm going to fill back in some of the soil I have. And you want to pack down that soil so it's nice and firm on the base. That helps uh, eliminate the possibility of settling with time. And then we can stand the tree back up, place it into the hole, and again take a look and get an eye. And we're pretty close to ground level now with this. I'm going to take some of the soil that I've got in the container I have, dump it around the tree, Spread it evenly around the hole, breaking it up if it's clumpy as I go, remove large rocks, anything you may find in there that will inhibit root growth. Then I'm going to straighten the tree just by simply looking at it from two sides, front to back, and then left to right. And then I'll just begin pressing with my hand not really pounding the soil in the ground. You don't want to do that. You just want to firmly press it in. Again, making sure we're pretty straight. 
and that the flare is still at the top at grade level. Now as you can see here, I'm somewhat shy on soil. Generally I do not recommend adding an amended soil. I like to use the parent soil that we have and the soil that came in the container. But there are times if your soil is really, really poor from the test that you did, or if you've dug out the sod, rocks, big pieces of material, and that's taken away from the mass, so you need to add something back in. So today I did bring just a little bit of soil with me, just for this purpose. I'm going to quickly just add a couple of scoops around the base of the tree. Set my shovel off to the side. Again, I'm going to spread the soil around. Gently pat in. It helps firm the, the tree and the root system in place. Make sure that my flare is exposed. They do not want soil on it. That will eventually end up rotting the trunk wood around here could cause all kinds of disease disorder and also make it structurally weak if the tree does get um, somewhat bigger. So we don't want anything touching the trunk wood. Now you'll notice this tree has a sweep to it just the way that it was grown in the nursery. One of the things that you can do is either rotate it so the sun, the southern aspect of the sun is hitting the weak side, bend it back, or you can add a stake to it and have it staked up for a, about a year and then I would definitely take the stake off and see how the tree responded to staking. Do it again if you need to, but definitely after a year you're going to want to check into it. Now, once we've done this, We've pretty much got our tree in the ground. We need to mulch. I grabbed again, I brought some mulch with me here. You just grab it. Now with mulch, I like to use a nice organic mulch. This stuff here is ground wood chips and leaves combined. Um, it's composted for several weeks, let it break down, mix together well. And I like to spread it about two to three inches thick all the way around the trees, evenly as we can, so it's aesthetically pleasing. May not be the perfect circle, but pretty close. And again, we do not want mulch touching the trunk, the same thing as the soil. So always scrape away your mulch a few inches from the base of the tree. It may have a slight divot in it, but that little divot's going to look better than the dead tree if you were to put stuff up against the, the trunk and rot it away. Now that we have it mulched and planted, the most important thing you can do for post planting is to water. So once you've got it in like this, the mulch is around it, you would bring in a good amount of water, saturate it well, let it settle, and then keep your eye on it, watering it once a week or so, depending on weather, time of year, um, and watch it grow. So, thank you. Mm -hmm.